Oh, I love technical breakdowns. No, I don't really. 9.33. Good morning, Andrew. Good morning. How are you? I'm well, thank you. <laughs> Well, I've been better. I've been better. Technical issues, but never mind. Uh, listen, let's talk about your book. Is it Jack Sheehan and the King's Chalice? That's right. Okay, I, I wasn't sure was it Sheehan or Shine, but this is, this is your first book. It's my first one, yes. My first fiction book. And so what, what, other, what other stuff have you done? Uh, well, I'm a midwifery lecturer in the University of Dundee, and I've, so I've written quite a, a number of things, articles and some books um, in, for my work, but this is the complete departure. Yeah, cause, I mean, you, you, you've, you've been around a bit, and I don't, don't mean age-wise, but you've, you've travelled a fair extent, haven't you? I have, yes. I've born abroad and moved around a fair bit, um, but my folks are from the north of Scotland and um, always knew I'd come back. Mm-hmm. And well, which part of Scotland are they from? Uh, my father came from Inverness, my mother from... Well, there's nothing wrong with being a snicky boy. No, not at all. No, excellent. It's, a, place. It's, uh, it's nice that fellow Invernesians can chat together. Oh, yes. Yeah, absolutely. So what part of Inverness w- was he from? Uh, Crown Street in the centre. Oh, the posh part. The posh part. Oh, the posh part. Yeah. Near, near that very well-known school, Crown uh, School, and of course the... In Banesh Royal Academy. Aye. Very posh. Uh, so, uh, how, how, how long have you been a lecturer then? Uh, well, I've been here in Dundee for about 12 years now. Right, okay. Yeah. Uh, you, you're also street pastor at the unofficial padre in the Tartan Army as well. That's right. How did yeah. that come about? Uh, well, the street pastoring or the yeah. Tartan Yeah, well, but both, both really. Well, the street pastoring is an initiative. It, it runs in lots of different towns and cities across Scotland and across in England, and it's uh, um, international now. Uh, and that started just 10 years ago, uh, originated in London. Um, because of problems that people had in, in um, violence and, and uh, antagonism in the streets, often in the early hours of Sunday morning. Um, and it's basically, a, it's a local church initiative, so people from different, various local churches uh, come together and basically just eyes and ears on the street mm-hmm. between 10 o'clock on a Saturday night and 3 o'clock Sunday morning. And it just helps just diffuse tensions and yeah. um, just keeps an eye out for people. Absolutely. Okay. It's, it's, it's a good thing to do. And I know for sure Padre and the Tartan Army as well. Yes, that's a little tongue-in-cheek, but it's uh, <laughs> offering the same kind of service. Yes. Now, let's talk about the book. Uh, how did the book come about? Because it's book one in a trilogy. That's right, yes. Um, I started writing a number of years ago when my own sons uh, were the right kind of uh, target age range. They were sort of 10 and 12 at the time, but that's a few years now. Um, and I'd been reading a number of books about Scottish folklore, and I realised that there was no... Um, tale, contemporary tale, is set today in today's Scotland against a big Scottish backdrop, so I thought it's time to, to write that, that book. Okay, it's, it's very much a fantasy novel, isn't it? It's fantasy fiction, yes. Yeah. It, it's set in the, the other worlds, but there are, it, it interlinks with the human world at, at various times. Okay, and uh, you've spent, uh, in, in the bits and, uh, bits and bobs you've got from your, from your publisher, uh, you've got down magic, but you've got it spelt in the old way. Oh, it is the old way. Yeah. It, it, it harkens back to, if you like, older times when uh, the, the Sheehan people were, were much more obviously recognised in Scotland. We've, we've kind of hidden them away the last couple of generations, yeah. but my, my grandparents, and I'm sure yours, probably grew up with stories of the little folk and the Sheehan folk. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, for, for, for people who don't know, can you just expand a little bit about the Sheehan folk? Well, the Sheehan, they're the other world people that uh, I think they've, they, they've weaved themselves in and out of human history uh, since time immemorial, really. Uh, but in Scotland in particular and in Ireland, uh, there's very strong connections with, you know, sprites and brownies and whites and pixies and elves and, and all mm-hmm. that. Uh, th- there's no fairies in my story, though. I've not used that F word, so it's just... Um, th- these are other worlds, people, so that some of them look almost like humans, but there's all sorts of other creatures as well, and they, they have different forms of magic um, that have developed over the, 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 the years, but mm-hmm. have become much stronger since the Stone of Destiny came back to Scotland. So that's been the catalyst. That's right. why it's suddenly coming to the fore again now. Okay, so the, the book's out now? It's published, yes, just yesterday. Oh, busy time for you. It busy is. time for you. Uh, published yesterday. Uh, so uh, how, how long is it going to be? Because you've, you've obviously written all three books then, have you? Yes, I have, yeah. Okay. All three are, are written. And, and when does the next one come out? Uh, it's penciled in for the autumn. So, right. Um, it, so it's quite quick then, really? It is. I think it's to try and catch, uh, catch the momentum, to so build some momentum up. And um, as I say, they're ready to go. So it's, uh, it's a question of just, just getting that right. So once these three books are out, what's after that? Have you got another project in mind? Well, in fact, the second story spawned, a, it's not a, a sequel, but it's kind of, it, it intersects, it crosses over the second book a little bit. One of the characters in the second book, who's not a major character, but I decided that he, he was interesting and I wanted to write his backstory and what happened to him afterwards. So mm-hmm. that's something that I've actually, I've written that one as well. Right. Uh, so that's, that's almost ready to go, I think. But All right. But we'll have to get the trilogy um, published first. I think, I think what you've done here would make a fantastic kids' television 
t- uh, series. It's funny. I, I, people who've read it said that they, they find it a very visual right, and that's yeah. the way I kind of... I, I had the screenplay in my head, and I was trying to describe the screenplay. So I, I think visually, and I think that's probably... It, 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 to me, it would make sense on a screen. To me as well. Yeah. And, and, and let's hope that the book ends up on, 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 on some sort of producer's desk and they go, do you know what, let's go with this project. It looks really, really good. Well, who knows? But, well, you can never tell what's going to happen, can you, in, 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 in these times anyway. Uh, you're published by Black and White Publishing. How did, how did that deal come about? Uh, well, actually, a pal of mine, uh, Ian Black, is uh, one of their authors as well. And um, Ian was a great help to me and he, he offered me lots of advice. Uh, and he was uh, brutal advice sometimes with a red pen, um, mm-hmm. which is necessary um, uh, just to, to improve the writing. And so he put me in touch with the publishers, and um, uh, th- that's how they, that came about. Okay, okay. Uh, going, going back to your past, you, you are qualified as a male midwife. That's right, yes. I'm a, a, I'm a midwifery lecturer now in the University of Dundee. Right. Uh, and, and you worked your way through Scotland and England, and uh, you were working abroad as well. And, and, and you, you're, obviously, you're obviously a very clever fella, because you know, you've got degrees and stuff, and, and you, you are a lecturer as well. Uh, did anybody say to you, listen, you don't really want to write a book? Uh, no, I don't. No? Think it, good. It actually, good. But, uh, it's, but people have been very kind. They say, no, it's good to have another string to your bow. And yes. Just a, a different kind of uh, creative outlet. Mm-hmm. How, 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 your kids have obviously read it, and, and, and you said you know it's the same at the, the, at the age group they were at that, you know, at that time. How, how old are they now? Uh, they're seventeen and eighteen now, so they're a little above the target age range. Yeah, uh, have, have they read the book? They have, yes. Um, they, they thought it was good. They wanted a little bit more blood and gore in it. No, they would do, wouldn't they? That particular age. <laughs> it's, it's a very good book. It's available now. Is it, where's, where's it available? It's available in, in a number of bookshops that people have told me they've seen it in Waterstones and W.H. Smith, so it's in various bookshops, uh, and the, the launch is actually on uh, in W.H. Smith's in Perth this Saturday, so there's right. a book signing and launch then. Excellent. Okay. Are, are, you, are you nervous about that sort of public appearance? Um, I, because I lecture and I, I do a lot of talking, that's, it's not a lot, but it's a different audience, so I'm not yeah. quite sure what an audience of uh, youngsters will, will be like. It's, it'll be different to students. It's, it's, it, it certainly will be different, and we wish you all the best with Jack Sheehan and the King's Chalice. Yes, that's right. That's your first one. What's the second one called? The second one is Jack Sheehan and the Mappa Mundi, and the third one is Jack Sheehan and the Destiny Stone. So tell me, about what's a Mappa Mundi then? The Mappa Mundi is a, it's like a, a medieval map of the world, um, which uh, is another one of the Sheehan treasures which they, the, the, the youngsters have to, to find on their quest. So it's, uh, it's a magical map which is uh, used in the human sphere but also in the other world sphere but for different purposes. Okay. Did, did, you, actually, did you actually sit down, before you actually const- constructed the book, when you had to create the character and, uh, and, and, and all the impending um, adventures around the particular character, did you, did you have a sort of big mind map uh, on your wall or did you just go with the flow, whichever way your brain took you? No, I had a pretty good idea of the whole three stories at, at the start. I, I had a good skeleton idea about where it would go because there's quite a lot of travel involved. So it's a sort of a circular journey. Uh, where they, they start, it's, it's set in Edinburgh, and that's where they start out. Mm-hmm. But because of circumstances, they're forced to leave, and they, they make their way to the west coast of Scotland and up to the Western Isles and the, then the Northern Isles and then back. So it's, it, I had a good idea of that, that sort of that journey, that trajectory at the start. Excellent. Well, listen, Andrew, Andrew Simon, we wish you all the best with this in this book, and in fact, all the best with all three. Can, can we talk to you again uh, when the next book's out? Uh, yes, certainly. I'd be delighted to. Uh, we would be delighted to have you on the show as well. Uh, thank you very much indeed. Andrew Simon, have a good day today. Thanks very much. Thank, thank you. Now. Bye-bye now. Bye now. Well, there he goes. He's gone.